This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. George Kennedy, dressed in his best blue pinstripe suit, stepped over the body of the man who had been his employer for the last thirty years. Billy Wilkerson, my father, lay face down on the linoleum floor of the master bathroom, naked and emaciated, a plastic tube with a metal clamp protruding from his abdomen. A few feet away a cigarette had burned itself out, charring the white floor in a brown worm-like trail. It was a little after 6.30 a.m. on Sunday, September 2, 1962. It was the first time Kennedy had seen his employer naked. He was shocked at how undignified he looked. Death swept away all his greatness, he would later recall. He bent down and placed two fingers on Wilkerson's neck to check for a pulse. Tichi, my mother, was waiting, standing there. He told her that her husband was gone. Then he broke down, sobbing uncontrollably, dropping to his knees. When he had sufficiently recovered, he nervously began reciting the Lord's Prayer over the dead body. It was a futile gesture, he admitted decades later, but I was at a loss for what to do at that moment. Wilkerson's small beige poodle Pierre came in. It licked its owner's cold face and immediately launched into a fit of howling so haunting it raised the hair on the back of Kennedy's neck. Tichi, unnerved, interrupted Kennedy's prayer abruptly and asked him to remove the dog. Kennedy muffled his sobs with his handkerchief, picked up the dog, took it downstairs, and locked it in the kitchen. Billy Wilkerson had apparently risen from his bed at approximately 3.30 a.m., and in the dark made his way unsteadily limping to the bathroom. His widow remembered the sounds of her husband feeling his way along the walls in the darkness. In the pitch blackness of the bathroom, he sat down on the toilet and, out of sheer habit, lit a cigarette. Judging by what was left of it, he had inhaled only a few times before a heart attack overcame him. The cigarette fell onto the floor. Wilkerson's own fall was precipitously halted when his open mouth caught the small reading table in front of him. The coroner later determined that he was dead before his face made contact with the table. Tichi told Kennedy that her husband had risen twice during the night to go to the bathroom. At approximately 4.30, when he did not return to bed the second time, she went to investigate. She switched on the bathroom light and found him on the toilet his upper jaw clinging precariously to the reading table. With great effort, she unhooked his head from the table and shifted his body to the floor. Not knowing what to do after that, she immediately summoned Kennedy, who made the long drive from his Pasadena home to his employer's Bel Air residence to find my mother still dressed in a white silk bathrobe and utterly bewildered. A few evenings before, Wilkerson had slipped and fallen on that same linoleum floor in his bathroom. His dog had tipped over its water bowl. My father's screams, which echoed throughout the house, were so agonizing that I had plugged my ears with my fingers. I was only ten years old. But on that Sunday morning, my sister Cindy and I were still asleep. After my mother called the coroner's office, she locked the master bedroom door to prevent us from inadvertently entering. The coroner arrived just before 7 a.m. and officially pronounced Billy Wilkerson, age 71, dead. The death certificate later listed the cause of death as heart failure. At 7.30 a.m., Cunningham and O'Connor Mortuary collected the body. It was close to eight o'clock when I came downstairs and found my mother and George Kennedy seated in silence in the dark, wood-paneled den where my father had spent so much of his leisure time. When my mother spotted me in the doorway, she quickly escorted me upstairs and sat Cindy, who had just risen, with me on my bed. She put her arms around us and told us that our father had passed away during the night. 